Welcome into Tennessee Titans today. I am Tom Down. We're going to do some positional battles as OTAs kind of wrap up minicamp getting going today, by the way. But we want to hear from you guys first and foremost. What position battle do you think is the most important? Sound off in the comment section right now. Minicamp is underway for the Tennessee Titans, and we're here to take a look at some of the top position battles. We'll go more in-depth on Minicamp later on. By the way, Kevin Byard is present, so no more freaking out over that uh, potential issue for Tennessee. Not that anyone involved really thought it was going to be much of an issue. But we're breaking down the top position battles to watch, not just through Minicamp and OTAs, but through training camp as well. Some big positions that have to be sorted out in terms of the pecking order for Tennessee this offseason. Before we get going, we're asking you to share today's video on Twitter. Probably the easiest spot to do it, right? Click the share button, hit the Twitter icon, and then click post to Twitter. Feel free to edit your message or tag me at WhatGoingDowny. If you tag me, I'll be sure to retweet you as well. Let's dive in then to the top position battles. First up is left tackle slash left guard, namely figuring out who starts where. Now, my suspicion, my gut, uh, my intuition, I guess that's the similar as gut, but whatever, thinks this will be what the Titans' offensive line looks like once the season gets started. Andre Dillard at left tackle, Peter Skaronsky at left guard, Aaron Brewer at center, Daniel Brunskill at right guard, and Nicholas Petit-Friere on the right side. I think that figures out your best five in terms of maximizing them all. But there could be a scenario in which maybe Andre Dillard and Peter Skaronsky flip. Now, it's worth mentioning that early on through OTA, see how minicamp shakes out, Skronsky's been the first team left guard, second team left tackle, all of which is pretty solid. But USA Today broke down this left tackle battle. Let's see what they had to say. If the Titans had an all-pro Pro Bowl left tackle on the roster, you would plug in Skronsky at guard without any hesitation. Unfortunately, that's not the Titans' reality at the moment. To be as blunt as possible, Skaronsky is competing with a former first-round pick and disappointment who struggled under one of the best O-line coaches in the league, ultimately losing his job to a former rugby star who developed faster slash better than Diller did despite only learning to play football a few years back. That is as blunt as possible, I suppose, from USA Today. Although Diller hasn't been bad. Jordan Maialata has just been better. Uh, I don't think Dillard's a bum. I don't think I think he's an upgrade over the disastrous Dennis Daly rotation the Titans used last year. But Skronsky has arm length issues. He's not the longest player out there. He might be a better schematic scheme style fit at left guard than at left tackle. And Dillard, for himself, hasn't been the best outside of left tackle. He's been way more comfortable on that side. Both these guys should start. I'd be pretty shocked if they didn't. Who starts at left tackle, though? AD for Andre Dillard. My vote. P.S. for Peter Skronsky. Go sound off in the comment section, especially if the ad break comes here on YouTube. Quarterback is next up here. Now, I do want to get this out of the way early. I feel very confident saying Ryan Tannehill, barring injury, always got to throw in that qualifier because weird stuff happens sometimes, but barring injury, Ryan Tannehill will be your starter week one at the quarterback spot. Everything coming out of, out of OTAs, more on minicamp later on, I, I promise you, is that Tannehill is just the better quarterback. But what happens at the end of the year? Not only with how Tannehill plays, we saw him get hurt again this year. That that was an issue, or last year I should say that, that was a problem. And what happened to Tennessee's week 18, week 17, knock on wood, hopefully they aren't, out of the playoff race? Do you try Levis at that point? Possibility. Here's what Bleacher Report has to say on this quarterback battle. With While Tannehill should enter camp as QB1, it's worth noting he's coming off a season-ending ankle injury and went just 6-6 six and six as a starter last season. He's also learning a new offense under new coordinator Tim Kelly. It's not that much of a new offense, so I wouldn't put too much stock in that one, but they continue. All of this means Tannehill might not be quite as entrenched as outside observers might believe. If Levis is the future and the Titans want to get a look at the future sooner than later, the rookie will be allowed to push Tannehill in camp. Competition will also be important to determine if 2022 third-round pick Malik Willis has any future with the franchise. Willis got some chances as a rookie to post in a, a dismal 42.8 passer rating through eight games and through three starts. If he falters, 
Tennessee could be in the market for a new long-term backup. I do appreciate the angle of not just the Tannehill spot because I'm pretty confident there's not going to be much competition in week one. But the backup quarterback job could have some competition. Malik Willis wasn't good last year. He struggled. He was always a two-year project, and he got thrown in halfway through. It just didn't go very well. Levis has been up and down at OTAs. We'll see how minicamp goes, but Levis is the future. You spent an early second-round pick on him. This regime thinks he is the guy. So whether it's you know later this year, next year, even two years from now, it needs to be Levis or oh, there might be some more changes coming to this Titans organization. So do you believe in any of the quarterbacks on this roster? Could be Tannehill, could be Levis. Maybe you're one of the few remaining Malik Willis fans in Tennessee. Sound off in the comment section a Y for yes or an N for no. While you're down there, get yourself the Titans hat deal. Chatsports.com slash Titans hats. Links will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. I got tons of styles, variety, fits, the draft hats, and my favorite one, the combo pack is available. T-shirt and hat, pretty much two for the price of one that you would normally have to spend, if not even cheaper. So get yours today. That deal will last only a limited time, by the way. Chatsports.com slash Titans hats. Next up on the position battles, you've got wide receiver, which you have Traylon Burks, I would say, established at the number one spot because there is nobody else. <laughs> This is the most open spot on the team in terms of proven talent, even investment level. It is fairly wide open, not just from like wide receiver two, but to like wide receiver four and five. A long list of players, some of which have a better shot than others to be wide receiver two. I think NWI, Nick Westbrook-Akina is your heavy betting favorite there. Kyle Phillips, the slot receiver, stands out. Chris Moore, uh signed somewhat recently. Racy McMath is a nice size speed prospect plus some uh, recent late round picks. Colton Dow, Reggie Roberson, Mason Kinsey. There, there's options but they're not proven. And what Tennessee needs most of all and so far the offseason buzz has been very positive on it is for Traylon Burks to step up, to emerge and become a dynamic option, a legitimate wide receiver one. I feel good about that one. I think that NWI will be wide receiver two but maybe your wide receiver, two actually ends up being your slot receiver. Maybe Kyle Phillips, who I like coming out of, L uh, out of UCLA, excuse me, can emerge as a piece at that spot. Or maybe you even cheat altogether and you say Chico Conquo at tight end is your wide receiver, too. Who do you think it ends up being? Sound off for us in the comment section. Name that wide receiver, two in the comment section. And we're assuming, of course, Sheldon Brooks is receiver one. I think it's somebody else. You can, I guess, also comment that. Inside linebacker, the lone defensive position battle we'll go into on today's show. Been any offseason of change in the middle. David Long is gone. Aziz Al Shair checks in as what I assume is going to be linebacker one on the interior. Now, he comes over from the 49ers. He was hidden, is the term I will use, underutilized because the Niners had great linebackers and Fred Warner. They have Dre Greenlaw. Most teams run two linebackers, not three. So it was kind of a dicey situation uh, in terms of how much he really got to play. There just wasn't the same volume from that perspective. Meanwhile, Monty Rice is the incumbent. We'll go more in depth on him in a little bit, but the Titans did sign two other linebackers. Again, change, right? Luke Gifford comes over from the Dallas Cowboys. Ben Neiman has kind of bounced around mostly with the Chiefs as well. I would assume Monty Rice ends up being your linebacker two on the interior. That That is my estimation, my, my, my guess, my, my gut feeling there as well. He's only started 10 games, though. He's been banged up in the past, but he was a third-round pick. He's going to get first crack at it. I think he wins that job. If he doesn't, it actually could raise some red flags, at least for me. Now, I, I did promise minicamp coverage to come, so make sure you guys are subscribed. YouTube.com slash Titans today. Minicamp underway today. Kevin Byard is present. No holdout. Not that one was really expected from that perspective. Might cause some national media to relax a bit on that story. We'll have some minicamp takeaways, news, winners, losers, all that and more. So make sure you guys are subscribed to Titans today.